What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. We have Invest 94L that is continuing to organize and develop in the subtropical Atlantic right here. We have a tropical wave in the main development region. Some storms are starting to fire up on it, so definitely something to pay attention to. Another tropical wave is coming off the coast of Africa right there. We're going to go ahead and cover all of this as well as some new shocking details that I wanted to go ahead and t uh, talk to you about. But before we get to those details, we're going to go ahead and first show you 94L. This now has a 60% chance of development in the next seven days. An area of low pressure located about 900 miles east of Bermuda is producing gale force winds and disorganized showers and thunderstorms. Recent satellite imagery indicates that the system does not have a well-defined low center level center. Not surprised there. Environmental conditions are supposed to be somewhat conducive for this system to become a subtropical storm in the next day or so as it meanders over the Atlantic. By the weekend, the low is going to turn northward, and it's not going to be uh, developing anymore. It's going to be limiting development due to the cooler waters and potentially a higher wind shear with that. But still a 60% chance of the next uh, 48 hours, so definitely something we need to continue to keep an eye on right here. If we take a look at satellite imagery right here, there is a cluster of storms that is trying to fire up. However, it's not really disorganized. It's not really uh, that well defined. So right now, I'm not terribly worried about it. But if anything else does happen, I will give you an update on that. Next thing we need to really talk about, though, is the sea temperatures. The global sea temperatures have continued to be on the rise, and things have been absolutely shocking over the last 48 hours. Yesterday, we reported on Pat's Path Predictor that we were finding buoys of 97 degrees, 96 degrees by the Florida Keys. However, there is something else that's been going on. On the southern tip of Florida, near the Everglades Nas uh, National Forest, or Na Everglades National Park, rather, they now found a a buoy temperature, like a surface temperature of 98.1 degrees Fahrenheit right there. That's right. Your eyes are not deceiving you. We're basically, like, we're very close to body temperature right here. Body temperature is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. And how they measured this was they basically, they measured it about five feet down to the Gulf of Mexico or just south of Florida right there. And that's how they hit that. And this happened for two hours straight. So definitely something we need to continue to keep an eye on. And this isn't just an outlier right here. We're looking at values across the southern tip of Florida, 95, 96, 96.6, 95, 95, 94. Yeah, these are extreme temperatures right here where we typically see ocean waters in the mid to upper 80s over here. The reason they are so hot right now is because in Florida, southern Florida especially, has had a huge heat wave in the, in the last month and things have been really going on. I've been talking with T-Volt, who lives in Golden Gate, and he's been telling me that the heat index are like 110, 115, close to 120. It's That's what's really driving these temperatures up in the Atlantic, in the Gulf of Mexico, those areas right there. Well, it, what will in, it indicate for hurricane season? Well, those temperatures hold and they continue and they actually expand a bit, uh, at least size wise. Anything that goes through there could definitely really intensify if the water is not too shallow, because typically once the hurricane moves over shallow water, it starts to not intensify as much. Example, this was Hurricane Laura back in 2020. The OHC, though, across Florida, across the Gulf of Mexico, across the Caribbean, has continued to grow. The loop current's cracking 150. Parts of the Florida Keys over here are cracking 100, 125, and parts of the Bahamas. A huge area of 125 plus in the Caribbean, an area of 125 in the main development region. And these 50 plus OHCs have expanded considerably compared to where we were in 2020. This is where we were in 2020. We were seeing a bunch of OHC of 50 plus like across the MDR, more, more localized on that, as well as parts of the Atlantic. 2023, boom, more green and yellow all over the place. So that's what we got going on with that. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the wind shear that we have going on. The wind shear has been fluctuating, but it has been decreasing across the MDR, across the Western Caribbean. It's been increasing in the Gulf of Mexico. However, it's only increased to about 25 knots or so. So definitely not really that bad for development if it does happen. 
but it's going to continue to fluctuate the fluctuate for the next i'd say month or so until we get into august we're going to go ahead and show you the europe latest from the european when it comes to the shear just to prove that and as you can see it's really all over the place and it does start to weaken a little bit in the mdr while strengthening in other places that kind of stuff is typical and then it starts to revamp up in parts of the eastern mdr over here but then it starts calming down and i'd say by july and this is july 23rd over here the gulf is completely clear parts of the atlantic are clear most of the mdr despite a few over unless a few isolated spots are pretty good 20 knots or less that's typically what you would want for hurricane development right there next thing we're going to go ahead and show you is tr is relative humidity right here the moisture component right now it's kind of all over the place as well we are seeing some mo moist pockets and a rather dry sea mostly due to the sahara dust that is going on it is expected to start weakening in the next month or so the mdr gets incredibly moist uh, by the next f four days or so it gets more moist than it was right here that's the, your sahara dust right there w whether it'll indicate or implicate the caribbean parts of the caribbean to really get more moist it will depend on a few factors but this hair dust does start kicking up again by the, by 240 hours out and it kind of just keeps the moisture at bay for now this is typically why you do not see very many tropical systems in the month of july especially in the main development region because the shear is fluctuating and if it was fluctuating like that it definitely could develop with some moist air. However, the air is just being complete is becoming completely dry. Although the moist air, although the air around the MDR is starting to increase and it's showing on the moder on the models right there. Excuse me. Now we're going to go ahead and show you some ensemble runs because the European has continued to be very consistent with showing some tropical storm and hurricane development in, in the next week or so starting. But things have really ramped up and things have gotten interesting over the little bit. So this is what we have the latest from the European about five days out or so or about four days out. We start seeing scenarios of uh, some ensemble runs starting to show some potential development in the MDR. And those start to continue to pop up right there as it moves slowly to the west over here. And then they some of them start intensifying. A lot of them actually get up to tropical storm and uh, strength, and some of them even get up to hurricane strength. And a couple of models actually have it indicating that it will hit the United States. These two over here are hitting Florida or staying off the coast. The rest of them have it either in the Atlantic, hitting the lesser Antilles into the greater Antilles, which include Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, Cuba, Jamaica, those areas right there. But they're still pretty dispersed out. However, the model run has continued to be quite consistent. And this is for late July, July 25th over here for the Europeans. So definitely something to continue to keep an eye on. And we'll continue to update you as time continues to go on. We'll show you the GFS ensembles as well for comparison. The GFS ensembles show something similar starting to happen about four days out. However, this doesn't really indicate that it's going to be as strong as the European is indicating, although... There are a couple of outliers in here that do show potential strengthening, including these two right here, about 354 hours, 360 hours out. I'm taking that with a huge grain of salt, considering that is 15 days out and towards July 28th. But still, the GFS is starting to pick up on it. And the GEPS right here, the GPS ensembles right there, do have something starting to pick up. They do have this tropical wave potentially starting to develop a few scenarios of that. However, as time continues to go on, another tropical wave comes off, and we start, are starting to have a couple of scenarios of tropical storm to hurricane strength right there by 204 hours out, which is about eight and a half days out. However, uh, compared to the European, there's not nearly as many models predicting model ensembles predicting that. So for now, I'm taking the European with a bit of a grain of salt. However, we should continue to monitor it, and I will continue to update you here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel. But with that being said, we're going to go ahead and close the video right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. But with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.